So today we're going to be looking at how to take basic shapes to help build out images for a circus, a carnival, an amusement park, something that's go it can use basic shapes of Photoshop and turn them into something a little bit more dynamic and fun. We're going to start by creating out a new document. I go up to the new file button in the top left corner of our landing page and we're going to customize a letter size paper where it's eight and a half by 11, but I'm gonna change my orientation to landscape, selecting the subject to the right, and change my background contents to transparent. Once I have my document settings, I click Create. And initial startup, I'm gonna take a look at my layers. I currently have layer one. I'm gonna rename to ground or grass. This will be the area in which we can build out our initial elements. And I'm going to go over to the second tool, left side navigation, the rectangular marquee tool. And about a third of the way on the bottom, I'm going to look to draw out a rectangle shape in which I can fill in a gradient or fill in a color to fill this space. Over on the left side navigation, I can choose between the paint bucket midway down on the toolbar. I have the paint bucket if I click and hold where the gradient tool is, or I can choose to do a gradient where it's a blend of two or more colors with a smooth transi transition. But to start out, we're going to click on the paint bucket and I'm going to edit my foreground color. I can either edit my colors down on the bottom left side of the toolbar, or I can manipulate in the color section above my layers panel up on the right side. So if I want to manipulate up on the right side, I have black currently as my foreground color and white as my background. If I want to change the black, I want to select in this area and I can click and drag in the hue bar and I'm going to pick out a light green for my foreground and currently my background is white, but if I want to change this, I can click on the white box and I can adjust on the hue bar to pick out a different tone. I'm going to again get a green color, but this time I'm going to go to a darker green. So if you see my color samples, I have a light green and a dark green for my foreground and background. If I were filling this in with a paint bucket, I could just simply click inside the area and we see the light green that is represented from the foreground. But I want to have a little bit more depth to the design. So I'm going to look to switch my paint bucket and go over to the gradient tool. And with the gradient tool, I can drag from top to bottom or bottom to top, depending on the direction I want the gradient to be appearing. So dragging from top to bottom, we see the darker area, or I can reverse this, go from bottom to top, and we can see that it gets darker on the bottom and then lighter on the top. It's up to you to kind of figure out the best blend for your design. You can always alter colors if you're not satisfied with the color. So if I want to darken up my background or my background color, I can click and drag into a darker tone of green, and then again, click and drag to develop out and get a better separation for my gradient. Once I have my ground, I can create a new layer. This time we're going to rename layer one sky. Again, I'm going to look to use a gradient to create a nice blend for the color of sky. If you want to do a night scene, you can manipulate the colors. Currently, because I have the green from the ground, I could take a look at the presets that we have in the top left side for the gradient tool. We have to have the gradient tool selected to be able to see the presets. But if I wanted to get the blue presets, I kind of scroll through the options available. If I want a purple or blue sky, if it's more of a night scene, or if I want a more day scene, I could pick the lighter blues. Or you can take a look at other colors as well. If you want to create a more evening sky, get a mix of colors. I can select out, say, this magenta to purple. And for my sky, I can look to click and drag. But we want to select out the area for our sky. To select out the area, I'm going to go back over to our rectangular marquee tool. Click and drag over the area. So we're focusing on the top half, or top two thirds of our image. This is separated from our ground layer. So if I look to draw out a gradient, 
I can click and drag from top to bottom. We we'll get a nice evening sky or night sky that we can add in some details. Again, it's up to you to decide whether you want to do a day sky or night sky, but there are a number of different options that you can choose from if you want to get a different effect and go for more general evening sky. Click and drag. Or if you want something a little bit more bold, you can experiment and see what it looks like with a very vibrant red, orange, and purple sky. The longer you extend the line, the longer the gradient blend is going to be. So if I wanted a shorter blend, you see that we get the balance happening within the design, but because I have the mirror gradient currently on, I can switch over to the linear gradient, but clicking and dragging down again from top to bottom, I get a nice blend of this purple into the pink, into the orange sky. So if I want it longer, just again, continue past the area of the object, and we get a smoother blend overall. Now that I have my ground and my sky, I'm going to look to create out a new layer. And this is where we're going to get into building out features for a carnival. I want to first deselect. I can hit Command or Control D, depending on if you're on a Mac or a PC. Just get rid of the dotted lines. With this layer one, I can start out to look to build out a Ferris wheel. When it comes into labeling, this is going to take multiple pieces to build out. So it's just a matter of taking your time to get the accuracy and detail that you're looking for. I'm going to start out with just a single long rectangle. This rectangle will be used to help create the areas of the Ferris wheel. I'm going to change my foreground color over to a gray color just so it's very visible on my background. And I can go over to my paint bucket and paint in this area. If I do want to add in more details, I can always add them on later on. But I'm going to deselect, Command or Control D, and I have this bar that I can start to work from. We can always scale and modify the size of this later on, but what I'm going to look to do is duplicate out my Ferris wheel layer. To duplicate out the layer, I'm going to go over to the Ferris wheel layer over in the Layers panel, right-click, and towards the top of the right-click, I'm going to click on Duplicate Layer. It comes up with Ferris wheel copy, that's fine. We will eventually merge this into one single layer. I can click OK. And though you can't see what happened, I've created a copy that's sitting directly on top of. If I hit Command or Control T, I can look to rotate this object, and I can rotate it in a 3 to 360 degree rotation. But if I hold down Shift, I can lock it into every 15 degrees. So I'm going to set it to 90 degree angle, so it's going horizontal. Now that I have two pieces for the Ferris wheel, I can hit enter to place that horizontal line. I'm going to look to again create a copy of the two layers now for my Ferris wheel. To select out both layers in the layers panel, I'm going to select on the Ferris wheel, hold down shift on my keyboard so I can select out both layers. If the layers are next to each other, you can also do command or control to select out both the layers as well. But now that I have both layers selected, I'm going to right click on the area again and duplicate layers. Again, you cannot see the duplicates over top of the original images, but if you hit Command or Control T, I can look again to rotate. I'm going to rotate these onto a 45 degree angle. Now that I have what looks like eight lines all merging together into the middle. I can look to add in one more if I want to add a little bit more details. So I'm going to create a selection of all four of my Ferris wheel layers. 
again, I can hold down Command or Control, individually select loan layers, and you can do in any order if you do not select them at first. Or again, select on the top layer and then hold Shift to select on the bottom layer, and we will select all the layers in between. Now that I have the layer selected, again, one last time, right click and duplicate layers. I can click OK, and again, Command or Control T. And I'm going to look to rotate this one more time. Because I'm not settling on a 15 degree angle, I am going to have to eye it. But I can get as accurate as possible. And once I'm satisfied with the placement, I can hit enter. And now we have a good rotation for the middle of our Ferris wheel. When it comes in, into adding other details to the Ferris wheel, I'm going to look to create a new layer. And this is going to be the Ferris outer circle. With this layer, I'm going to still maintain the grays that I've used for the bars that connect in between. But we're going to switch over to the elliptical marquee tool, second tool, left side navigation, located underneath the rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to look to draw out a circle shape that's going to extend over top of the pieces of my Ferris wheel. If it is not exact, I can always release with the mouse and then use my arrow keys on my keyboard to nudge it into the correct placement. So once I'm satisfied with the placement, I'm going to actually look to fill in this area. I can use my paint bucket tool, simply click inside. And yes, it does overlap all the pieces, but we are going to cut out and reveal those lines again. To create a cutout of the middle of the circle, we have the circle drawn, so it's, we should not need to redraw it. What we're gonna do is look to contract our selection. So we're gonna maintain and leave these dotted lines around the outside of the image. But we're gonna go up to select at the top navigation. Under select, we're gonna go modify and contract. With contract, what we're looking to do is reduce down the pixels. So it's going to get smaller inside the circle. I'm gonna type in about 20 pixels, and I can always go back and redo if I don't feel like it's what I'm looking for. I'm gonna click OK, and we can see that it does cut in very well to the area around the circle. It's reduced down the area, and all I have to do is hit backspace or delete, cutting out the area inside, leaving the exterior of that circle. I can deselect, and if I would like to Add in other little details. I may want to look to duplicate out the circle. With a duplicate of the circle, I and right click on the layer, click duplicate layer, and I'm going to hit Command or Control T, where I can scale down and create a duplicate that can sit with inside of my circle. I want to place it as best possible. Again, you can always use the arrow keys on your keyboard to nudge a shape into place to make sure that it is accurate as it possibly can be. So once I'm satisfied, I can hit enter to place the object. Now I can look to add in other details. If I want to look at drawing out the seats for my Ferris wheel, I'm going to again create a new layer. And we're gonna to look to use basic shapes to help build out a cart. I'm gonna draw a little bit larger so we can see the shape being built. And we're gonna see how we can modify and change multiple pieces into one single shape. So for one of my carts or the seats, I'm going to look to draw out a rectangular shape and just pick out a different color than the color I was currently using, I'm going to pick out more of a blue color so it stands out. 
and I want to make sure that the blue is appearing on the foreground color. I can use the paint bucket tool and click inside the area to fill in that area. Before I add other details, poles, and a roof onto this area, I'm actually going to look to skew this bottom portion. To modify or distort this image, I can deselect first, Command or Control D, and I'm going to go up to Edit at the top of navigation. Under Edit, I'm going to go to Transform, and I'm going to go to Distort. You can always use the shortcut keys in which we can hit Command or Control T and then right click on the image. I can choose and pick out a different tool that may help me modify or distort my image. But for right now, I'm going to go with the distort. I like the flexibility that it has. If I want to modify shape, I can look to pull in certain areas. If I want to make sure that I'm maintaining perfect angle on this, I'm going to hold down shift to make sure that the pieces stay in the location that I'm looking for. Once I'm satisfied with this distortment, I can look to add in any other modifications. So if I wanted to try a warp and see how I can manipulate the shape, you can't really see the lines overall in the shape. But I'm going to set it to 3x3 three three so we can see the definition and see how if I look to modify the shape, I can click and drag to change and distort the shape overall, making it a little bit more customized and unique. So if I like how it's modified, I can hit enter, seeing that I've kind of rounded out the sides of the object. Now I'm going to actually look to add in additional pieces to help make and define this shape. I'm going to look to use the rectangular marquee tool to draw out some bars that are going to help define the top and connect the top and bottom of the pieces. I can draw out one piece and over on the right side I'm going to look to draw out a second piece relatively the same size as best possible. If I need to nudge, I can always use the arrow keys on my keyboard to move them into place. But now that I have these shapes drawn out, again, I can look to fill these areas in. If I want to use the blue, I can maintain the blue. Or if I want to use my eyedropper to match a color, maybe I want to get the gray of the objects. I can use those as well. But I'm going to look to fill these in so I can click on the paint bucket and click inside the area. So we have two poles that are going to be the connection for our top and bottom. Now we want to draw out the top portion. With the top portion, again, I can use either rectangle marquee tool or you can use the polygon lasso tool. Third tool, left side navigation. With the polygon lasso tool, I'm going to look, to look to click a point. I can hold shift to make sure that it stays completely horizontal. For the top portion, I can kind of draw what I imagine the roof of a Ferris wheel cart might look like. If you're not satisfied, you can always deselect, redraw it at any point. But for this, it works for my design. I'm going to look to match the bottom color. So I can use the eyedropper tool, the seventh tool on the left side navigation. Click and sample the color. And again, use the paint bucket to fill this area in. If you want to do any modifications or add any details onto the design, you can always consider using the burn tool or dodge tool to help lighten up or darken some areas. I want to deselect so I can apply some effects onto this design. But over on the left side navigation, two icons below where the paint bucket and gradient tool are. I'm going to go to where I can see the dodge and burn tool. I'm going to start out with the burn tool. This will allow me to add in some darker shadows. 
And if I click and drag across the image, we see how we can darken up the area of my cart at any time. I can do this for the roof portion as well. But it just helps to add in some dimension onto the object. If I want to reduce the size of my brush, you can see my cursor towards the top purple side. I can use the left or right bracket to adjust the size of the brush at any time. So left bracket makes your cursor go smaller, right bracket makes your cursor go larger. So if I want to add in little details, I can even hold down shift and click and drag to create out separations and darker areas on my actual object. You can do this for the top portion as well. Again, if you ever mess up, you can always hit Control Z or Command Z to undo. But now that I have a cart, I have a design. If I do want to add in some dodge tool to lighten up some areas, give it some highlights, make it stand out in an interesting fashion, I click and drag over the area. So once I have the overall shape for my cart, you can see that it is quite large in comparison to the rest of the Ferris wheel. If I want to modify the size of this, I currently have the one single seat layer, but if I wanted to create out duplicates of this layer, I can look to use the move tool, first tool left side navigation. If I hold down alt or option, alt on a PC, option, on a Mac, I can actually get a duplicate in which I click and drag, it automatically makes a copy of the layer that you're clicking on. If I wanna change the color of these objects, make each individual cart their own unique look, with this copy that I've just now made, I can go up to image at the top navigation, under image and go to adjustments. I'm gonna go down to hue and saturation with my hue and saturation, I'm going to look to adjust on the hue bar. And you can see that as I drag, it's going to modify and change the color to another color of my choice. So I can adjust this out to a red, an orange, whatever I like to see how it can modify and change the image overall. I'll do go in order. So for green, I have a copy. But again, I can hold down Alt, click and drag. Now I can look to modify and change the color of this. Again, image at the top navigation, adjustments, hue and saturation. Again, reducing down my hue. I can change out the color, the tone, of the look and the feel of the design. Though these are quite large, I may want to look to reduce these down, get them into proportional sale. So over in the layers panel, I'm going to look to select all three of the seats. And then I'm going to hit Command or Control T. And I can scale these down so that they're more proportionally fit to the design that I'm trying to create. So once I'm satisfied with the size, I can simply hit Return or Enter. And I'm going to place my carts in every other section. So if I wanted to have my green cart, I can click and drag it downward. I'm lining up so the top portion would meet the intersection of the interior poles. Now that I have the three seats, I can again continue to make copies or duplicates in which I can place around the exterior of my Ferris wheel. Though that these are yellow, I can always adjust the colors later on.
So once I have blue, green, yellow, this one I can go into orange. Again, image, adjustments, down to hue and saturation. Or you can hit Command U to bring up the change on the option. So again, Command or Control U will bring up the color picker to, or, and be able to adjust the hue. So if I want to adjust down on the hue bar, again, just expanding it over to an orangish color. Select out a new one, Command or Control U, adjust the hue. Command or Control U, and just keep adjusting until you get the colors that you are satisfied with. If you need to make adjustments, or you can always adapt to other different colors. I'm going to lighten this blue up so we can get a better blend. Make sure that I have all the different colors that we can choose from. So we want to think about all aspects of our Ferris wheel. Right now I have all the different lines that connect and everything, the seats or carts that make up our design, but we don't want to have a floating Ferris wheel. You want to think about how it's going to be attached to the ground. I'm going to create a new layer. And again, just make sure to rename your layers so you understand what layer you're working with. First wheel stand or poles just to identify what section that we are using. So with this layer, I can look to use the polygon elastic tool. And with the polygon elastic tool, I'm gonna to click a point. I can hold shift to make sure that the next line draws horizontally. And then I'm gonna to look to connect up to the middle portion. I'm gonna connect back down. And I may wanna change the color just slightly so that we do not have the same exact gray happening for this section as well. So just a little bit lighter gray, and I'm going to look to fill this in. Again, with the paint bucket, just click inside the area. And I can deselect, Command or Control D. And based on the location of the object, I'm going to actually look to create a copy again. Right click on the layer, duplicate layer, this time, I actually want to flip the object so it faces the other way. This duplicate, I don't like the, or I want to have mirroring over on the other side. So I'm going to go up to Edit, Transform, and Flip Horizontal. This way, I can slide it over into place, and now it has a mirror effect, giving me the sense that this is holding up our Ferris wheel. If you would like to make modifications or additional elements to your design, you absolutely can. Try to make it unique as possible. But I'm actually going to move these two layers below our metal poles. Clicking and dragging them down below the layers, or you can hit Command or Control left bracket to nudge them down below the objects. So we can see that we have a Ferris wheel design. We can always add in more details. Again, it's up to you to how creative you want to get, but we can see what other aspects we can create. Now that I have my Ferris wheel, I'm going to look to just group all these pieces that make up the Ferris wheel so it doesn't hinder us or detract us with all the amount of layers that it took. What I want to look to do is select out all the layers. So I can select on the top layer of this Ferris wheel for this one of the seats and then hold down shift and select on the bottom layer of the Ferris wheel. With every layer selected and highlighted gray, I can click on the little folder icon 
I'm going to look to rename this folder group one Ferris wheel and it's easy to understand that this it makes up all the pieces of my Ferris wheel. If I hide the layer you see everything disappears at once. Now what I'm going to look to do is get into creating a tent or something that's going to stand out in the foreground. To create out different shapes, different designs, I'm going to start out with the polygon lasso tool or you can start out with a simple rectangle. With the rectangle, I'm going to look to draw out just a standard rectangle shape that's going to stand out in the foreground. So it's going to go a little bit further down on my area. And instead of just doing a red tent like we would normally see, I'm going to change it to blue just because of the sky, the background that I have going on. I can change out my foreground color. And I can use the paint bucket to fill in this space. Though it is very simple, we can look to add in more details. With the rectangle marquee tool, I'm going to look to draw out more boxes that are going to help give us stripes along the shape. So at the top of my rectangle, I'm going to click and drag downward. And if I want to repeat the same process of the lines or stripes, I'm going to look to create a new layer first. And I can fill this in with white. Just click inside the area. Then I can deselect, Command or Control D. With the Move tool, first tool left side, I'm going to hold down Alt or Option, click and drag over to the right. As I drag to the right, I'm going to release when I have it in the right location. And then I can repeat the process. making it as accurate as possible. So we've created out numerous layers just for this one shape. If I want to look to merge it or modify it, I'm going to hold down shift, select out all the pieces. Understand that if I look at edit, transform, I do not have the ability to warp out the shape. I can distort features. If I click on distort, I can get into selecting out an area, squeezing in areas to make it a little bit more condensed. But if I want to distort this image, I have to get into flattening and merging these pieces into one single layer. So with the distort, I can pull in areas on the corners. I can reduce the size as well. But the one aspect I really want to get into, once I have reduced or brought in some portions of it, I'm going to hit enter. And with the highlighted layer selected, I'm going to right click and merge layers. This combines everything into one single layer. So if I hide this one single layer, you see that it disappears. But I'm going to go back up to edit, transform, and warp. With warp, I can see what happens when I, now I pull in some sections. I can look to create more of a rounded out exterior so it's not so flat. And just take your time with the tools. Take some getting used to it first. If I want to pull down portions, I can click and drag and create more of a rounded front on the bottom. Once I'm satisfied with this shape, I can look to hit enter on my design. We see that we have now the initial shape. We're going to create a new layer for the roof of my tent. With the 
polygonal lasso tool, I'm going to look to draw out more of a triangular shape from the top portion of my tent. Take your time as you go across. We just want to keep accuracy of the shape. And again, I'm going to look to fill in with one single color. I can match the sample, use the eyedropper tool to match the blue. Paint inside the area so we get that blue top. If I want to match the effect I have with the white stripes, I'm going to click on the polygonal lasso tool. Click a point, and I'm going to go to the top portion of my shape. Connect back to where I started. Repeat the process all the way to the top. So just drawing a number of different triangles that are going to sit within this area. I'm holding shift so I can add multiple pieces into one single shape. But now with them all selected out, I can go over to the paint bucket. I'm going to change out my foreground color to white and again fill in this area. So we have the stripes going all the way up. But again, this is on a separate layer, separated from the bottom portion. If I reveal this layer, I can rename it tent roof. Again, I'm going to look to use the warp to create a little bit more tent-like shape. So I can hit Command or Control T, right click on the actual object and hit warp. If I want to see the grid system at the top navigation, I'm going to change this over to three by three. And what I'm looking to do is pull on the anchor points. I click and drag inward, modifying the shape. If you ever want to undo, you can always hit Command or Control Z. If it's not working out how you want, again, Command or Control Z. I'm just going to step back. Set I'm going to go to the default. It allows me to manipulate the shape a little bit stronger overall. You can do this for the bottom portion as well. Or I can grab inside pieces to strengthen up the overall shape. Other little details that I may want to consider, I can add a new layer. This time I'm going to add a little half circles. I'm going to draw out with the elliptical marquee tool, click and drag. And if I want to cut up the top portion of this circle, I'm going to click on the rectangular marquee tool, hold down Option or Alt, click and drag over the top portion, and it'll cut out the top portion so I'm left with this bottom half circle. I'm going to look to fill this in currently with white first. And I'm actually going to make a copy of this. I'm first going to deselect Command or Control D. With the Move tool, I can hold down Alt or Option to create a duplicate. And this time, I'm actually going to paint it in with the blue that I originally started with. So if I click inside the area, we see that the blue is now affected in there. The reason why I'm doing this is that I'm going to actually let these overlap and sit at the top portion of my tent. So if I bring this down, even though it doesn't match up it necessarily right away, I can hit Command T to scale these down and fit them to the rest of my design. So if I zoom in closer,
I can place these at the top edges. I may have to modify one at a time just to make sure that the size and shape are in the right locations. Then I'm going to repeat the process, hold down Alt, click and drag over pieces. You can always hit Command or Control T to scale, skew, distort the shape to my preferred location. Alt or Option, click and drag. And I'm just using the move tool to select on the object I want to modify, then hitting Command T so that I can adjust the location and get it into the right position. There are going to be some bigger pieces, so again, I can always scale them up, rotate them into the correct positioning. I can see that the white one needs to be worked on by itself. Command T, scale it out so it fills the area better. And it's just a matter of taking your time. It is a tedious process, but it's going to start to make your overall illustration very strong. Finally, the last piece, I can rotate and get the angle correct. You can pull in, make sure it fits into the area, or modify the angle that I need to adjust. So a lot of little pieces, but when I zoom out, you can see that I have an overall stronger design for my tent. I may want to add in some features. So if I want to go back to my original tent, I'm going to make a duplicate of this just so I can see the difference between the white standard tent and if we add in a burn onto the objects. So if I click on the burn tool to create some three dimensionality, I'm going to burn around the outside edges. If I click and drag over the area on the outsides, I start to darken it up. It helps create a little bit more three dimensionality, like it's going into, fading into the background. I can also do this for the roof portion. You don't have to duplicate the layers, I just do it just to be safe or precautionary. Just clicking and dragging over a few times just to get that darker area overall. You can do this looking to combine the flat pieces top of my half circles as well. 
I'm going to look to select out all the layers. I'm going to right click and merge layers into one single layer. So if I hide the layers, you can see that they are now one. This way I can use the burn tool and go over these pieces as well so that they blend in with the rest of the shape. I also may want to consider adding in some shadows on these little flaps. So if I want to add in a shadow, I can double click on the layer and I'm going to look to add a drop shadow. And you can see when I add the drop shadow, it's a little bit strong, but it does give a good sense overall of having a little bit more three-dimensionality in the design. I can click OK in the pop-up when I'm satisfied. Now I might want to think about other little details that go into building out this tent. I click in create a new layer. I'm going to draw an opening within the tent. Start out with a triangle again using the polygon lasso tool. I go one color at a time to make sure this is as accurate as possible. I'm going to fill this in with a dark blue color or a blue color. I'll start out first, but I'm going to actually use the burn tool to darken this up a lot. You could always just go with a darker blue first to start out. I just like to take my time and make sure that it's getting as accurate as I want. Or if I do want to darken this up, I go into midtones or change this over to shadows so I can get more of these black tones within the design. I'm going to deselect again, and this time again going up to edit, transform, and warp. I'm going to pull in the sides just a little bit so it has more of a rounded edge. Once I hit enter, I can look to add in some other features. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to add a couple blue flaps on the exterior of this opening. And I click a couple points to help do my best to create a curve. And clicking just a few points at a time allowing me to get as accurate as possible and connect back to where I started. Again, same idea, I'm going to use the paint bucket to fill in this area and I'm going to burn this with the burn tool again to create a little bit more three-dimensionality. Reduce the size of my brush. And I can deselect. Gives me one flap. I may want to add in some highlights on or shadows on the back of this. I'm also going to look to replicate or duplicate out the flap that I have for my tent. Duplicate layer. Click OK. And I'm actually going to mirror it, flip it to the other side, edit, transform, and flip horizontal. Now I can use the move tool to slide this over to the left side. If it doesn't necessarily match up precisely, I can always hit Command T, adjust the placement. and nudge it to where you need. So again, I'm going to add in a shadow on top of this tent portion with 
the burn tool. And it's not affecting un anything underneath the object because we're focusing on this specific layer. Other little details that you may want to consider, we can consider ropes that are going to attach to these pieces. Again, I'm going to create a new layer at the top of my layers panel. I'm going to switch this out to more of a brown color. I can think of ropes that are going to be staked into the ground, keeping the tent in place. I'm going to click on my paintbrush tool. Paintbrush tool located the knife tool on the left side navigation. With the paintbrush, I want to adjust the size of my brush. I'm going to make it a hard brush. So I'm putting my hardness at the top navigation all the way to the right. Size is about 15 right now. I could always reduce it down just using the left or right bracket next to the P key. And I'm just going to reduce it down to about 11 for right now. But the idea of this is that if I create a point of where this flap is opening with the tent, I'm going to hold down shift. It's automatically going to make a connection between the tent and the place that I clicked. So I'm going to repeat the same process over on the other side. This way it looks like the tent is being held open. I can also do this for other aspects of the tent. Top left side, or right side, and top left side. Just kind of creating a mirror image, but it gives a sense that we've now created it out a nice tent overall. Other little details that you may want to consider, I can click on the plus sign, adding a new layer. I'm going to draw in a pole or post that can be at the top of my tent. I'm going to push it out to a white color using the paint bucket to click inside the area and I'm going to create a little circle just to sit on the top of this. And we're going to change this color out to a gold. I can deselect. And I'm going to add in a flag shape. We're going to create a new layer. Again, make sure to rename your layer. I'm going to call it flag. But with the flag layer, I'm going to start out with the polygon elastic tool. I'm going to click a point vertically that's going to run beside the, the pole. And then extend over to the right side here. Though it is flat, we're going to add some life to it in a second. I'm going to fill in the area with the blue of my original tent. I can use the eyedropper to match one of the blues. But if I use the paint bucket, drop it inside. Yes, it starts out flat, but we're going to add some dimension. I'm going to command D to deselect. And I'm going to go up to edit, transform, and warp. Or I can hit command T. Right click on the layer and hit warp. With this, I'm going to look to grab the anchor point on the top left side, top middle left, and the bottom middle left. Click and drag it downward. This will help create the sense of a sway happening on the design. Then I'm going to grab the top middle right and bottom middle right to give the sense that it is being warped and being blown and swept, wind swept by the wind. If I hit enter, I can see how it helps create that shape. I can also get into scaling, command T. I can reduce it down or change the shape a little bit. You can also look to use the burn tool on this object. 
If I want to darken up some areas, create, a, again, more three-dimensionality on the shape, let's give some shadow. Or look to add in some dodge and give it some highlights. Other aspects, you may want to consider doing a food cart or people. Give it some life. It right now doesn't have many different designs in it. You can get into more freehand drawing or you can look to build out shapes for your people. If I want to create out people, I can create a new layer. Think about basic shapes at first. You can use a elliptical marquee tool to draw out a head shape. Use the fill, uh, fill that area in with a paint bucket. I can use the polygon lasso tool to draw out shoulders, arms, and those little details, clicking point by point. Maybe you want to have the family walking in together. If I want to fill in the shirt, I might want to make a separate layer or just at least make sure that we're separating the colors. many different ways to design a character it's up to you to kind of find your style overall but if we're going with basic shapes it's just a matter of kind of building out the shape of what the character might look like don't forget hands don't forget feet those little details Maybe I want to add in some hair or stylize the subject. Creating out a separate layer just so we can see it. And you use the paintbrush to paint in the area. Many different features, different elements that you can create. These are just a couple quick examples. You can get always get into more detailed elements or think about different aspects. If you want to play with three-dimensionality, it's a matter of you being as creative as you possibly can. If I want to use the lasso tool, I made to create a layer in which I can create a little walkway to our entrance. And even though it is currently in front of my layers, I can always adjust the location. I can also use the eraser tool to erase out some areas, give it more of a sketchy look.
I can always adapt or try different brushes, see how it's going to affect my design. So just going on the edge, you can see them just adding in some green so it looks like the grass is kind of cutting into the dirt patch. Deselect. We see this transition happening overall. We had some nice little effects. I'm going to move this layer behind my opening. Other details think about clouds, maybe some lights, something to bring this to life. If I do want to add in some effects, maybe I have a string of lights. I can use the paintbrush, paint in some areas. If I start out with a initial line, I use the eyedropper to match the color of the rope that I have. And with the paintbrush, I'm going to make sure to do this on a separate layer so it doesn't get confusing. Yes, it is running horizontally right now, but I can always get into distorting the shape. With the move tool I select, I can hit Command T. Right click on the layer, possibly warp or distort. If I'm warping, just click and drag the pieces downward. If it doesn't come across right, again, you can always just hit Control Z, undo. I can also look to use a combination of shapes. So if I wanted to start out with a rectangle marquee tool, click and drag to create out a long rectangle. I can use the paint bucket to fill this area in, but I'm actually gonna use the elliptical marquee tool to cut out an area, which will help give me an arc shape. I can hit backspace to cut out the area. Then use my arrow keys to nudge the string downward. I'm going to invert my selection. At the top navigation, select inverse. This will allow me to cut out the area at the bottom of this space, leaving the top portion. So I get the rope on a bent line. Now I can think about other little details. Maybe it's lights. Maybe it's little flags. So I could use the polygon lasso tool to draw out some flags first. I can hold down shift to add in multiple flags at the same time.
I can use the paint bucket to fill in this area, pick out colors that you want to use for your design, make it stand out. And click in one, it's going to fill in all of them. But now that I have them all filled in, I can change out my colors. I'm going to deselect Command D. This time I can use the paint bucket to fill in. Clicking inside of the area with a new brush, new color each time. Just make sure you're working with the foreground color selected. If I want to add in some lights, I can look to draw out with the elliptical marquee tool. I just want to create a little extension, a little rectangle marquee tool that's going to make it look like a light bulb. Once I have one, I can create a new layer. I'm going to fill this in with a yellow or a white yellow. Use the paint bucket, fill that in. I'm going to deselect, and I'm actually going to add in a glow effect down at FX. I click on outer glow. Gives it a nice little glow effect overall in the design. I can reduce the size if it's too strong, but I want to give it a sense that it is glowing at night. I can also add an inner glow on the inside. Maybe add a white to the middle of it. It's going to start out in the middle so that it gets stronger and then gets lighter as it goes further away. So if we take a look at it, it has a nice little glow effect. Now I can use Alt or Option to create out some duplicates, applying this across the rope, giving it a nice night scene or evening scene in between each of the flags. If you want to think about other details, maybe you have some moon. If I want to create out a moon shape, I go to the elliptical marquee tool. I'm going to click and drag to create out a circle. But I'm going to fill this in with, again, this light yellow color for right now. And I'm going to use the arrow keys with the elliptical marquee tool selected. I can adjust this location to give myself more of a crescent moon. And simply hit backspace to cut an area out. I can deselect. I'm going to look to apply the same effects that I did for the outer glow and inner glow from the lights. I'm going to right click where it says effects and copy layer style. And I can paste this layer style onto layer 10. This is my moon. So paste layer style, and you get that outer glow, that effect around the moon. You may want to modify a couple of the settings to make it a little bit more realistic. So my size wise, I can reduce down the white so it's not so stark. And my outer glow, I'm going to expand that a little bit more and reduce the opacity so it's a little bit more realistic in its glow effect. Just softer overall. Then I can click OK. I want to move layer 10 or I will rename moon. I can hit command left bracket to move it down in the layers. Now I can see that it's behind my flag. You can always adjust the placement as well. Other little details that you can consider, maybe a balloon 
different balloon shapes. I'm going to create out a new layer. If you want to have the person holding balloons or draw out balloons, I'm going to start out with an oval shape. I can fill this in with a color. But I'm going to go up to Edit, Transform, and Warp. Grab the bottom middle to expand this downward and give it more of a balloon shape at the bottom of the image. I can use the Burn tool to create a little bit more three-dimensionality on it. use the dodge tool to add in some highlights or even paint some areas in with the paintbrush I'm going to reduce the hardness just so it looks a little bit softer and come out more as a highlight. If I deselect, I have one of my balloons. I may want to add in some more. I can hold down Alt or Option, click and drag, maybe stack a couple together, and I can change the color again, image, adjustments, hue and saturation. Change the hue so we get a different color balloon. And I can possibly use the paintbrush to paint in some or strings, rope, that can connect at the bottom of my balloons and connect to the subject's hand. Other aspects, if I want to get into something more complicated, maybe I want to draw out a hot air balloon, create a new layer, so we can drag an oval shape. I'm going to use the rectangle marquee tool to give me an extension at the bottom portion. I can use the paint bucket to fill in the area. I'm going to deselect and go back up to image adjustments, hue and set. I can change the color with hue and saturation, or I can go to edit, transform, and warp to get into modifying the shape a little bit. I want to skew it down, change the size. Again, I can burn on the image. Or if I wanted to create out some separations on this, you can draw down halfway on the area. I'm going to click a couple points to help draw out a curve shape. And even though I'm drawing on the outside of the object, 
it will only be affected based on the area of the layer that I actually have created. It won't affect the outside, but I'm going to push up the highlight and give me some white highlights. Or I can change the color completely so it looks a little bit different. Again, I can use the burn tool to darken up some areas. And again, think about the little details that go into it. Maybe having the little basket underneath of the hot air balloon. We're adding in the ropes that can make up the design. So many different things you can do. There's a lot of space to still fill in rides, carnival, snacks, snack stands, anything that you can imagine. Try being as creative as you possibly can. I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to leave a comment, subscribe. Have a great day.